Name. Thank you. My name is Jocelyn Canzanaria, uh, 4980 East Owens Avenue, apartment 13B, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. I heard about the playground, and I'm so avaricously uh, like to design those things. I think I've sent a couple of drafts through on what I wanted. So if that's an opening, I would please, you know, would love to be a part of it. And thank you for your services and all you've done. I mean, it's appreciative. <laughs> Right. Any other public comment on agenda item number nine, section eight, <laughs> review? I'll be willing to entertain a motion if the, if the commissioners have one. I just have one question, one more question ahead, for Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, so is anything contingent upon, say for example, if you submit this and you all have given them your recommendation, is there anything contingent from HUD that would be a reflection on you because for me, you know, just based on some of the concerns that I have with one, nine, and ten, you know, I'd be looking at a B, maybe. I was at a, I was at a C. Right. Uh, I worked my way back to a B, but I don't know if I'm at an A. I, I know I'm not at an A, but sure. Now, so it, we, we do have to submit this. Yes. Um, or well, what we can do going forward, as I said, is the. The, the, the CMAP scoring shouldn't be done on an annual basis. It should be done on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, and that data collection uh, should have been done by some type of a compliance person that directly reported to the sure. executive director, not in the department that, you know, obviously if the director is supervising their own person who monitors them, that's, you're going to get the score that you want. Um, but, yes, we do need to sort of submit this. Yeah, and I understand, uh, you, you know, you're coming in cleaning up, you know, your predecessor, if you will, mm. and having to take on some things that, you know, previous administration had left on the table for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess still in all, you know, still trying to infuse your own vision and directions, um, you know, one of the ladies, she stood up and said, you know, hey, finally she gets an opportunity to do her job. And I think that's what everybody wants to hear. But customer care is vitally important to all of us. And, you know, it, sometimes it's real painful sitting here listening to people um, who express that to you, and it's like they are under the assumption that we are 100% in the know of what happens here on a daily basis. And you know, I just don't, I don't operate like that with you. We brief, and you tell me what you want me to know, and I just have to kind of feel my way through it. And so, um, you know, just my interactions with some of your staff, you know, have been great. You know, when I've had concerns about some of the residents and some of the issues that we're dealing with. And you know, you guys have been Johnny on the spot and have been extremely responsive, but there are a number of concerns that con consistently come before us here that I think we're all kind of raising our eyebrows like, wow, that's, that's crazy. And I appreciate, you know, um, you and I have had our differences and you know, we worked through it and we, we like grown men and we talked it out and, and, and moved on. Uh, but I, I do, I do want to say publicly, there were some issues that, that have gone on in Marble Manor you know, you took the time out during the holidays and went over and walked the property and addressed some of those issues that were vitally important. You know, that's great. There are a whole bunch more, you know, that need to be addressed. But, you know, all in all, I just think um, I'm interested in knowing moving forward what, what are we going to do differently with the process changing. And you, you did indicate that HUD's changing this whole format, so it won't be a self-assessment anymore. Um, but I'm hoping that we do something to where we get some type of sample, sample type response from the people that we serve. And um, I, I think as we continue to communicate with them and, and respond to them, I think some of those responses will be better. It doesn't feel good, I'm sure, for you to sit there and listen to a lot of complaints because you don't get a lot of accolades for what you do in the seat you're sitting in. But, you know, it's what you signed up for to a certain extent, right? Correct. Um, but yes, in, in, in fairness, uh, one of the things that did get off track last summer was that, because we did it when I first got here, was uh, customer service uh, survey, uh, and then we need to also do our employee satisfaction survey, and then the 360 evaluation of the executive director, and that's something that we can talk about at the executive yeah. committee uh, scheduled, uh, I think, February 3rd mm -hmm. or 5th to join. Okay. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, I'm not sure. Um, as far as the recommendation, I'll let somebody else make the motion, but I'm just going to go on record in saying that I'm, if we had to go on a grading scale, I'm not going to do the A. I'll do, I'll do, a, I'll settle for a B. How about that? 
point taken. And I just wanted to ask too, just for our information, is, is this grading system more of a, like, yes, no, you get the point or you don't? Or is it more of a rubric where you're kind of like, I don't do it ever, never, sometimes, um, almost always, always. Like, I'm trying to figure out how the points get yeah, added it's, up. It's mostly a yes or no on, on, on the point system. It's not like a fast where you have certain type of indicators that are sub points uh, mm -hmm. to that and, and aspects. So either uh, so, you hit it or you don't. Yes. And, and so one of the things that I, as, as I debrief weekly is, is that as we get back on track is having a concern where I can actually know exactly myself what's going on uh, because a self-assessment is a self-assessment, right? Uh, some years ago, we uh, housing authorities were allowed to do assessments, self-assessments on their public housing, and HUD stopped that, obviously, for, for, some, for several reasons. So uh, I think it's fair that we, we may have to have used the CMAP as a tool because um, it's a HUD standard tool, but then we can overlay that also with direction from the board of other indicators that need to be factored into our own internal assessment. And I think that's fair. Commissioner Sayer Bloom has a question as well. So just to follow up then, so you're gonna change this self-assessment? Well, for the, for the HUD aspect, it, it, it's currently uh, a self-assessment. HUD in the, uh, in the last conference, I said it wants to move more to a non-self-assessment tool. But for internally for us, I think the self-assessment will continue to be an internal self-assessment uh, because it'll be just in the executive uh, director's office instead of in that de department doing their own self-assessment, if you follow me. Does that make so, sense? How, so many, <laughs> how many components to the self-assessment? 14. 14, those that we just reviewed. Yes, ma'am. And each, there's different things that are, go, that are going different departments or yeah, so a certain data this this collected and then there's uh files and then there's timelines and then there's processes that are, are collected and what was happening is that those were being collected on an annual basis instead of a, a weekly or monthly or quarterly basis and so there's no way to actually measure it until we got a rush to get it in in 60 days for the reporting requirement and that's that's not efficient and that's not fair to the agency and it's not fair to the board to know truly where we are. And that's something similar in a concept of having the compliance manager uh, also do a similar kind of thing with our FAS score on the public housing. So we probably need to do a, a presentation and break that down a little bit more because I'm trying to compile <laughs> some stuff in a very short period of time. And I think he has a follow-up. I was going to say, there's probably some kind of a computer program out there that, that you could utilize that you could, if you're, if you're talking about you're going to evaluate your different departments, uh, ask them to report stuff, you can monitor it and then let us know. So we're kind of in the loop too. Right. So one of the things I, I think is helpful is the commissioners uh, participate in those committee meetings because you do get uh, debriefings on particular like the admin and uh, finance uh, uh, departments and then particularly on the operation side you get uh, good updates on indicators on where those departments are and I think those the committee uh, for the interim are, are good uh, uh, opportunities to receive that that information okay um, we can maybe also reconsider if some of those meetings because sometimes I think they overlap with other meetings that we have to be present for. And so um, just if we can look at the calendars and see if there's some flexibility in, in checking in with the commissioners what days work best. Will do. Okay. I know, but sometimes I have city council meetings that I have to be in attendance for. And so it, it precludes me from participating in some of the information that's shared here. So that's why I'm just saying if we can not overlap on county commission meetings or city council meetings, that's helpful for us to get the full picture. That's, that's all I'm saying. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? And what is our pleasure? Do we want them to go back and do their assignment again? Do we want to pass it? So let me ask this question because I think it's weighing on all the commissioners' minds. What's your deadline to get this submitted? Overdue. <laughs> All right.
We need a motion to. I have to a question. Will the funding be affected if you go back and change it to a B grading, like Commissioner Weekly had suggested? Because I kind of agree with him. Philosophically, but the honest answer is no. <laughs> you know, HUD can always say if you don't do X, Y, and Z, we do that. But HUD moves so slow, even if you did. But it's all. It's about having making demonstrating to HUD that hey, you have these regulatory reports that you're supposed to do. Do them in a timely manner. So we don't have to be sending you a letter that's just a nu nuisance to you. But, you know, moving forward, along with the 14 indicators, I've heard it very clear from my bosses that we need to have other indicators, other measures, um, and we need to make sure that uh, the information that's being collected is not and, and reported is not, you know, police aren't policing themselves. And so. With a strong. <coughs> Um, vetting system I think there's a way to engage our residents resident councils in this process and saying hey what's the good way to gauge our productivity or our response time or so I think that that would also give it some fairness and some balance in crafting something yes um, definitely so the resident council will probably be more on the fast uh, side and there actually is a, a change with uh, inspire uh, replacing fast where there's a resonant component in the evaluation of, of, the, of the properties but on the section 8 side dealing with uh, CMAT there has to be some type of resident survey uh, because those residents we have to figure out what those components actually would be relevant and it particularly could be like the timeliness moving in um, lease up in time and, and and that would be components that residents would have to survey we would have to survey the residents on okay but and I've I just failed my test. You, but I've heard <laughs> y'all loud and clear. Between I just caught myself. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. But I've it. heard y'all loud and clear. Do we have a motion to move and approve this? Move to approve. Item number nine. Item number nine. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Sager Bloom and a second by Commissioner Davis. Which What's the initial? Sharon Davis. To just differentiate. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, Any I'm opposed? A no. I'm a no. No for weekly. I'm a abstain. And uh, Commissioner Hooks abstains. Do we still have a motion that passes? Can we do a roll call vote, please? Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Robinson. Oh, your mic's not. Oh, you want to use mine? <laughs> there you go. Okay, Cheryl Davis. Um, Sharon Davis. Olivia Diaz. Um, Misha Hooks. Abstain. Okay. Tick Segerbloom. Yes. Lawrence Weekly. Okay, so we have four A's, one A, one abstain. Does this have to pass with majority? No, the motion passes. Okay. Right. Thanks. All right. I just thought if you needed three fourths, then it was going to be. No, we're good. Okay. All right. Um, that's end of the items open for discussion and possible action. And now we're moving on to business items. Number 10. Identifying emerging issues to be addressed by the board and executive director at future meetings. Receive updates on the activities of the executive director and direct any directions from us to the executive director. Um, we've already heard some directions we'd like to see you go in. Is there any other um, requests that the commissioners have before I turn it over to the executive director? Seeing none, go ahead. Mr. Williams. Well, actually, uh, Commissioner Whit, uh, Weekly uh, jumped to uh, what I was going to talk about, so we just finished talking about it, the, the CMAP scores. <laughs> Thank you. So we uh, took care of that. So we were efficient. Yes. We took care of two for one? Yeah. All right. I guess the only other thing I'd like to put on the record is our discussion um, that we had on yesterday, and Mr. Stafford did follow up with me. I have a phone call I owe him um, in reference to uh, the park over at Marble Manor in terms of us addressing um, what I think is uh, unhealthy um, for the kids there. I believe you all have it roped off today that the kids aren't don't have access to it. Is that is that accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. And so it, it, it's my hope that uh, based on what I understand an estimate would be, 
um, I think it's roughly around 50,000 yes, um, to go in and retrofit that park and remove all of that, that sand and dirt there. Um, a lot of kids suffering from asthma and all types of other elements um, that we, we get that park um, up to standard um, to where most parks are today um, with um, Councilwoman, I can't, turf and um, the, um, the, um, the cushion and, and just something that these kids can go in and, and play on and, and be able to go outside and recreate opposed to, um, you know, having these kids play in a bunch of dirt. You know, um, again, you know, we attended a couple of meetings over in the neighborhood there, and, you know, a lot of the residents are, are very concerned because of, you know, word that was out that they were going to be immediately um, removed from and relocated from the property there. But, you know, they've been informed that I guess that's not, that discussion is not for another couple of years. And, you know, my comment that I like to put on the record is, you know, well, they're going to be there a couple more years or however long it is, doesn't mean that that condition for those kids in the neighborhood have to stay the same. And so I believe um, that it should be incumbent upon the housing authority to do something about it, and it's a start. So um, thank Agreed. you for the conversation on yesterday um, that we had, and thank you for um, following up and, and, you know, taking the comments uh, very serious. And I appreciate you, Mr. Stafford. I, I do owe you a call, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open it up to no, since I don't see any further discussion on emerging issues. Um, citizen participation items raised under this portion of the agenda cannot be deliberated or acted upon by the Board of Commissioners for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority until the notice provisions of the open meeting law have been complied with. If you wish to speak on matters not listed on the posted agenda item, please step to the podium and clearly state your name and address and spell your last name for the record. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of a presentation, this will be done by the chair or the board by majority vote. And then all comments by speakers should be relevant to the Board of Commissioners of Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. My name is Jerry M. Neal. I live in Marble Manor. Uh, at one time, I was uh, an organizer for the resident council in Marble Manor, and the organization lasted for nine years give and take a day or so because of all the all the uh, attacks and all the unhelp that I didn't get from Housing Authority. I just heard Mr. Weekly say that we should think about the kids in the neighborhood and, and try to make life a little bit better for the people living in the housing. This has been one of my major things. This is what I've been doing since I've been in public housing. I have been trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying for 18 years. I have been trying. I'm 69 years old. I have talked to the director. I have talked to every director probably came into public housing. And as a fact, what they're telling you, because you probably don't know any better about how good they are doing it over there, that's not true. I have the facts. I got pictures. And if, I, if I'm correct, pictures are proof. I got documents of the, uh, of the people. Of the, I got documents of the maintenance man riding by mattresses that's been sit out on the grass for seven or eight days. And then I got these kids from housing living around the corner. They come around. They jumping on the mattress and playing on the mattress. Well, and then they come back talking about, well, we got bed bug problem. Yeah. Yeah, you got all these trash laying on the sidewalk and the managers or the, or, the, or the maintenance man who ride past it and leave it there. Daily, hourly. Okay, so Phyllis Carpenter, um, I wanted to say something about the November meeting. Um, out of the 11, um, 11 boards that was on that that report only two of them are in good standing with the state all the rest of them have been revoked or they're not in good standing i know that marble manor was revoked in 2009 so they can't even get a um uh i'm frustrated now <laughs> um for for the business license they can't even get one because it was permanently revoked it's up to like it's almost three thousand dollars to get one um for Marble Manor, um, he also said that um, that the the 
in the CFRs, it says you have to be elected in. You cannot be appointed by the housing authority. They went behind my back. I was elected in. They went behind my back and swore in a new president and a new treasurer and didn't even notify me. Miss Merriam, at the meeting we had with, in, with Eugene and Miss, um, I can't even think. Where is she? Miss Rhodes. Um, I, they, they was trying to push me into letting her be, be the president. And I was like, I feel like you guys are pushing me into a corner. And I want to do some more research because I wanted to go into the past bylaws from 2009 and see what the bylaws stated and how, the, how it was supposed to go about. Okay, um, after that meeting, Miss Merriam, like the next day, swore her in as president. She said that I would have to be there in order for her to be sworn in. Well, I, I, I emailed them all back. I said I wanted to do further research, and they went right above me and swore her in as the president. Okay, um, they do what they want. Um, they're, the maintenance, okay, so they came through. They did a real estate assessment last month. Um, I've had a leak behind my bathroom wall ever since I lived there, I believe. Um, last month when they did the real estate assessment, they have come in, like I said, and I've, I've pulled up and they've been in my house and they said, well, you had an open work order. Who opened the work order? Because it wasn't me. Come to find out they opened the work order. Um, so I called last month after the real estate assessment, I called to see if there was any open work orders. There was none. So when I went to the office, I told them because even when Amber came through and did the the inspections or whatever, yearly inspections, I noticed mold growing behind my washer on the outside of the wall, okay? And she came into the bathroom and she kicked the piece of drywall and said, oh, there's no, there's no issue. But there is an issue because that wall, um, maintenance came through, they pulled, they pulled the, t the toilet first. They said that it was with toilet leaking. They put a new wax ring, put the toilet back on. At the same time, they pulled the baseboard off. Well, that two by four in the framing was so saturated wet that it was, it was disgusting. So their, their um, fix to it was to take that, um, that, no, not even kickboard, that plastic vinyl right there that you have on, on, on that wall and do two strips of it because it wasn't even tall enough to fit, to cover it, okay? And then they cocked it and screwed it on. And the next day I looked at it and I was like, what? So I had my friend bring me a piece of four inch baseboard because I don't want no bugs in my house. I, if, I don't want no bugs. And so I went, I pulled it off. I didn't even have to unscrew it. That's how wet that drywall was, okay? It literally came, I could squeeze the drywall and it moves. I have pictures of it, whatever. Okay, so now this is, this is the 15th of December. Um, it was, um, it, it was, anyways, um, they worked, this is the week before Christmas. Okay, they worked Christmas week, they worked the um, Christmas Eve, half a day and the day before that they worked a full day. So now I called them and I told them they needed to come and do, so, it, that that isn't where the leak was, it wasn't under the toilet, they needed to come find the leak. So they came and they found the leak. It's to the main drain. The, side, the, the pipe has, is so corroded, it's been leaking out of the, out of the side of the, out of the side of the corroded pipe. Okay, fine. But the way that maintenance handled it, um, I told them you need to drop plastic right now because the way, I'm, I'm mold certified, I was on a mold abatement crew, okay? I know how to, the, the proper procedures. They did not drop any plastic. They did not try to prevent the mold spores from spreading through my house. They did not try, you, they, cut out, they cut out the wall and then they stuck duct tape with a trash bag over it. Like that's gonna do anything. And it, it, if I hadn't stopped the leak, I put Gorilla Glue in that hole to stop the leak. Otherwise, every time I do dishes or take a shower, it would still be leaking today. And it wasn't until after, until last week that they, that they decided now I need to do an emergency move. And I think that it has to do with me being on the resident council and the stink that I'm, that I'm throwing about the resident council as well as, as the, the pipe leaking. But when you're put on a transfer list, the CFRs say that you should, you should um, have preference to where you wanna go. And I've told them before that I, I prefer to stay at Marble Manor. But now I'm going to Sartini Plaza or Annex that is a senior property. I don't know what else to say. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Any other further public comment? 
citizen participation, excuse me. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, thank you for your service. And uh, I would like to say, too, I have a sister who is a HUD specialist, so I, I really uh, have compassion for uh, and, and some kind of appreciation for the work that the HUD um, Housing Authority However, it's so unacceptable. It's my understanding from the research that I've done, and I have several of my uh, neighbors who are here today, and I'm so glad that they are, is to bring up the fact that, again, I have a picture of my bathroom with the black mold, and I have repeatedly tried to contact Mr. Parker's office. I actually faxed over 34 pages along with uh, those same pages to the Attorney General, Mr. Um, Aaron Ford. I filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the Housing Authority and a million dollars per day that they're going to keep us into a condemned building. And again, they haven't even responded. They were very nasty, rude, disrespectful. Even the lady on the phone hung up in my face. And again, each and every meeting, we're having one of our neighbors who are on the um, deceased list. And this is so unacceptable. I am not asking, I'm begging you to please intervene on this extremely serious, I can never stress enough, serious situation. Every breath we're taking, we're dying. So now, I'm not exactly sure what the remedy may be, but I think compassion, we can start right there, and of course, immediate action. But again, it's costing the taxpayers a million dollars per day. A million dollars per day. And I want you to know that Mr. Parker uh, was so arrogant, he didn't even show up to court. So that means that he's in default. So again, we really want them to actually address our issues, our concerns, be very serious, because we are. Thank you. We have a lot of people who are dying. I live in that senior building. And like I said, I feel so, 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 so responsible for my neighbors. They know that I love, I really love, I love them. We have a lot of people who cannot even speak English. And no one is even thinking about, again, these are elderly seniors. It's unacceptable. It really is unacceptable. And it's an embarrassment. It really is. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon. Delphine Coates from Sartini Plaza, 900 Brush Street, Unit 415, Coates spelled C-O-A-T-E-S. I have an issue with a lot of the residents there because I'm familiar with most of them. I think we have 259 residents and I probably know 200 of them. Uh, why is it that we have to wait for the appliances that have been there for 35 years to fall completely apart before they get a new stove or new refrigerator? And I have a list of 15 people as of yesterday that I just started that can't get new appliances, the refrigerators don't work, they go out in the middle of the night, mates is not coming. And I just like to know why it takes so long to get some appliances when things are broken. You can't keep a stove for 30 years and not expect it unless they want it to blow up. One lady stole every time she turns it on, it smokes. The alarm goes off. So I'd like for someone to address that issue at Sartini. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Paul Beckwith, B-E-C-K-W-I-T-H, and uh, I've been living at Sartini Plaza for about a year, and um, before that I lived at uh, Stella Fleming, which is run by uh, Nevada Hand, which to me is the worst. I mean, I felt like I was in an internment camp run by Gestapo prison guards, so I want to just thank you for the housing authority because before I lived there for three years, I lived at Levy Gardens for three years. So I'm pretty familiar with 
what goes on here, and we all have our problems. But I want to tell you, you're so much better than Nevada Hand. I can't uh, thank you enough. So anyhow, the reason I'm here today is to talk to you about zero tolerance on uh, violence between residents. Now, I don't know what you guys' definition of that is, but on December 16th, 15th, when, wait a minute, it was uh, 14th, it was a Saturday, we got our commodities from uh, the Dream Team and we were setting up the, the community room and uh, there was a, a argument between two residents and it calmed down for a little bit and then there was some more screaming and I looked up and there um, Cheryl punched Bill in the face three times, bam, 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 and I mean hard, knocked him out and <coughs> when, I <coughs> when I got to him, he was unconscious. He was non-responsive for, I don't know how long, it seemed like three to five minutes at least. And um, I don't understand why she's still there. I mean, you can't be punching people. I mean, this is beyond a little scuffle in the schoolyard. This wasn't just, I, it's, he's lucky he didn't have a subdural hematoma. And if he was a big guy, if he had fallen on one of the fragile older women with the osteoporosis, we'd have had a pile of bones. So this is not a, a minor thing. <coughs> and I, th <coughs> I think that you guys have the authority and the responsibility to set in place a zero tolerance policy. And this is actually an, a great opportunity to spread the word amongst all the housing authority properties that that won't be tolerated. But, you know, she should have had a three-day notice to uh, vacate and uh, summons and complaint within the first week, in my opinion. It's up to you guys. And also, I would have had the police take her in for a 72-hour hold, um, whether she was uh, a danger to herself or others. Now, I don't know what all the ramifications are in Nevada. Now, in California, we called it a 5150. So is that my time's up? Sir. Oh, okay. Thank you so Anyhow, much. Anyhow, thank you. But and, we, and we I, definitely I, took note of your concern, and um, I know the executive director will ensure that he follows up to yeah, see. Was this reported to the property management? Oh, yeah, site? yeah. And, and they went about, well, who hit who first, and somebody called somebody a name, or somebody pushed somebody and whatnot. All I saw, I wrote what I saw, and I'll give you this. I didn't put my name on it uh, because unless they're going to do something. You can hand it to Dominique right here. And unless take they're going to uh, do something about it, I don't want to have to look over my shoulder the rest of the time I'm there. Yeah. So um, anyhow, I appreciate you taking that into consideration. And I assume there's a zero tolerance policy on that. I don't know, but there should be. Anyhow, thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Daryl Hawkins, 300, I mean, excuse me, 900 uh, Brush Street. Um, all I'd like to say is thanks. Uh, I've been at the unit, the, uh, the complex for almost five months now, and I think it's great. I've have, they have activities, they have things going on. I don't have to sit in the house. I have a little extra money to get my hygiene stuff. I was in a, never thought that I would be living in the place that I'm living in now uh, because I was working 24 seven. Lifestyle has changed. You guys came through for me. I want to let you know that. The things that you're doing helps out people. You might hear a lot of complaints, but you, you, the only complaint that you're gonna hear from me is that I can't get hot water at four o'clock in the morning. And I, I get up early. And another thing is that you have to run the water for a little while for the water to warm up. And that's a waste of water. But other than that, that's all I have to say is say thanks for you guys. Okay? Peace out. I appreciate, we appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good My name is Venetia Kelly, I'm a landlord. Um, I was here back in September for some issues that needed to be addressed as far as uh, payment being late for the new tenant that arose into my property in July. And so now I'm back because I had to go over a discussion with the accounting department because I received a 
which seemed to be a second letter until I, I got here. I found out it was a second letter, a first letter that was sent to me, certified mail, that once I got here, I, I was shown a paper that was sent certified, but the card was never returned. So that means I never signed for it, no one's ever signed for it, and I never received it, informing me that my payment for my new tenant was going to be deducted because I received funds for a tenant that moved out July 1st. Uh, the tenant was out by July 1st, and I signed a, a um, rescission of lease June 25th. So that lets me know that this paperwork was submitted to the office, and the tenant's payment history should have been exited out of the system. Well, if I would have received a payment in um, August, September, October, I would have probably have not been down here because I would have received some funds. So what happened, I received a payment in my account in uh, believe August or July, let's see, August for my past tenant for 668. And I called, uh, actually one of the case managers, Debbie Vega, she called me because I uh, the rescission of lease shouldn't have been signed and the the past tenant tricked me into it. But nonetheless, I told Debbie, I have a payment in my account that's been sitting in my account for a couple weeks now. What do I need to do with it? Because she called me to follow up about the situation. And she said, keep it. OK. So I said, well, the tenant's lease wasn't exactly up until August, so maybe that's why she said that. So when I come down here two weeks ago, spoke to Ms. Isabel in the accounting department. We walked over to the opposite end of the building, back to Section 8 building, all to be told, well, you signed a rescission of lease and the tenant is already gone. And I said, yeah, okay. And then you guys sent me a payment, a payment that was attached to my new tenant's payment, all combined, so I couldn't really decipher, oh, I got a payment for a past tenant without no money being in my account for three months, and all of a sudden I get a, a d deposit for a tenant that I don't have anymore. So then I get told, well, it, we have 11,000 participants. It happens all the time. So now I'm getting put in a place where I'm being harped upon like it's my fault that money got into my account for a past tenant that should have been out of the system, and all of a sudden the money's flowing into my account now. My full money's coming for my new tenant is exhibited out of the system for the next two and a half months. So now I have to come up with the money to make up the difference, which is fine that you want to pay yourself back, but that's causing a very, very inconvenience to the landlords and putting us in a tight crunch. So this is, I've had, this is the third incident that I've had. I've only been a landlord on your program for two years. So what's really going on? I'm not having very co a lot of confidence in this, in this program when you're having financial monies going into an account that shouldn't be in there. So I need to have this issue or matter resolved and, you know, figured out. Mr. Williams, who's the best point of contact for her? Uh, finance and HCV. This is the first time we, we, we are hearing about this. Yeah, Isabel right. made it very clear, and she was kind of yelling at me that I received government monies and I need to send it back. I said, well, when I received a payment in August and I spoke to Debbie Vega about the monies I was sending in my account that I know I shouldn't have probably received, she says, keep it. How am I supposed to know who I need to bring it to if I've already had one issue and here comes another issue that I'm not even aware of and nobody's giving me the proper protocol for it? Yeah, so what I was, I, I was suggesting to other landlords, uh, uh, is actually to, to escalate it to the director of finance uh, okay. because then we could have resolved it before coming to, to, to the board meeting. Right, okay. Right. Well, uh, Isabel didn't walk me over there to that. And when I asked for Debbie Vega, everybody just looked at me like I was crazy. Nobody got Debbie Vega and to tell me why I got that payment. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you and I have talked. Well, you know how I feel about uh, folks receiving good customer service and it doesn't seem like you did so you know how to no. deal with that all okay right? well I thank you all <laughs> have a great day yeah. you know if you were my nurse I'll push you down <laughs> I'll go I'll take it <laughs> Miss Turner's got it um Beatrice Turner you know I thought this year to 
2020, I would not have to come back down here no more. I thought next last year would be my last time coming here. But since y'all raggedy lawyer, he wants to still play games, this right here, you tell him for me to go down there and get a school put in his uncle's name, they're the paperwork the school district sent me to have it did, tell him that's where it's going to stay. Because ain't no way I'll have nothing put in nobody's name concerning that piece of nothing y'all got for a term. So you tell him there's paperwork right there. Natasha Bosley, and I wanted to speak on the Nevada Energy. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, the residents at our location paid the um, NV Energy to come and do an assessment. It's a known fact that the people in the housing projects were paying a lot more than people in the houses across the street. And they found out it's because our windows and our door sills, um, you can feel outside. Inside, the wind is blowing. Um, and we have single pane windows that have probably been there since the property was built um, 20, 30 years. So um, at that time, the Urban League came in and did all of our window sills for free. But that was 10 years ago. They're coming off now. They're old now. So when you're in your talks with Nevada Energy, if they could maybe reseal, that would kind of help keep our bills down. Um, like I said, the house, the two-story houses across the street don't pay as much as we pay um, in just two and three bedroom apartments. Thank you. Frankie Jones, 5000 Alta, Jamestown Tower. Back in November, I paid my rent. I have a rental ledger, paid my rent on time. I left to go out of town for Thanksgiving. I come back. On my door, there's a 14-day notice saying that I owe rent. And this has been there, and I, you know, it's uh, kind of covered up, but not. So it was an embarrassment um, to my character. I did take it to the office, and I was told that a mistake was made. My uh, money order and another one mixed up, you know, no fault on on me since I was given a um, rent receipt saying paid in full. I was brought back into the office and told that I needed to sign uh, an agreement of repayment. I refused. Then I was told that um, charges would be brought against me, um, you know, and it could. Uh, I could lose my housing because of it. I did sign. I've been keeping a record of all payments made. I have called chain of command to see what can be done regarding this um, that's going on with me. Um, there was another incident, I won't bring that up, but to do with uh, the rent. You know, it shows that I've always paid. I would not have went out of town had my rent not been paid. I was given a rent receipt and I'm making payments, so I'm paying double. And I just want to know what's you know going to be done about that. Well, we'll have someone from, Ms. Ms. Jones, we'll have someone from uh, public housing uh, to speak with, with you about that. Uh, I spoke with you this morning and uh, you didn't bring that up, but uh, I'll, I'll have it addressed. Just upset that I'm done. Any further citizen participation? Seeing none and having no other um, items of business before us, I am um, going to call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>